a mass of copper, 2.2 kilograms. It's a sphere. It's allowed to change by more than 0.05% if the pressure on the sphere is increased from 10 bar while the temperature remains constant at 300 Kelvin, then determine the maximum allowable pressure. So we want to find the final pressure P2, the maximum allowable, knowing that as we increase the pressure, the volume is going to decrease. There'll be some isothermal compressibility for this, um, even a, a solid like sphere. And so this piece of information is we want the volume to change by no more than 0.05%. So the final volume compared to the initial volume, first of all, that's going to be a negative quantity, right? The final volume divide minus the initial volume will be negative. So we'll put a negative in front of that to make it a positive volume change. And we normalize it by the initial volume. And we want that to be less than or equal to 0.05% which is equal to 0 0.0005, turning it into a fraction, from percentage into a fraction. Okay, we're given some properties for the copper. We're given the mass density, uh, beta, which is not what we need right here. We need kappa, the isothermal compressibility. What was kappa defined as? It's minus one over the specific volume times the rate of change of specific volume with respect with respect to pressure holding temperature constant. Now, can we turn this specific volume into a total volume, a rate of change of total volume with respect to pressure holding temperature constant? For a fixed amount of mass, we can. And then you approximate this derivative by V2 minus V1 divided by P2 minus P1, so we've approximated that derivative, and then you have 1 over V1. If we can unravel this, we have the final pressure minus the initial pressure is equal to minus V2 minus V1 divided by V1, 1 over kappa. If you want to find the final pressure, then final pressure is going to be greater than P1 by that amount. Substituting numbers, so we start at 10 bar, and we have this minus V2 over V1. Well, that's our, our limit. We don't want the volume to change by more than 0.05%. And then we divide by isothermal compressibility. We notice this is in bar, this is in newtons per meter squared, so we'll use a unit conversion that a bar is 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. True? So the newtons go, the meter squared go, we're left with bar, bar. P2 is equal to 654 bar. If the final pressure is greater than that, then there will be more than 0.05% volume change. If it's less, it will be less than that volume change. Let's uh, look at part B. What is the final volume of the sphere in cubic centimeters? The final volume is 0 0.9995 times the initial volume. Volume initially is the mass divided by the mass density. Our final volume is 0.9995, 2.2 kilograms, uh, 888 kilograms per meter cubed. Convert 100 centimeters is equal to a meter, true? And then cube that. So it's 10 to the 6 centimeter cubed per meter cubed. And you calculate then the, the volume, 2,400 and 76 centimeters cubed, good to four digits.